Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Fix It In Post. Um, my name's Nick, and welcome to 2016. Um, I have not done tutorials in a while. I keep saying this. I think this will just be my tagline for every video that I do. I'll just say that I haven't done tutorials in a while. Um, look, this is just going to be a quick one because it's something that's come up a couple of times that I've noticed it in a couple of people's projects, um, especially people that I work with sometimes. And I notice, uh, I don't understand why people don't already know this, but you know, there, there are good and bad keyframes out there. Um, in my opinion, you know, there are keyframes for the right situation, but for most situations, you know, the good keyframes seem to escape them. And I don't understand how they can get into this industry and not know what those good keyframes are. Okay. This is probably not for uh, most begin, uh, most more advanced people, but this is definitely for some of the beginners out there. And let's, let me show you what I mean. Okay. So right here, I've got this ball that's bouncing off the side of the two walls of the screen here. So I'll just play it, show you what I mean. It's pretty simple animation. So only three keyframes, as you can see. Um, I'll just show you what they are. The first keyframe is at the beginning, uh, the left on the left wall. The next keyframe, if I jump and I press K, I'll jump to the next keyframe, is on the right wall. And the final keyframe is back again to the left wall. I press K again. You can press J as well to toggle backwards and forwards through the keyframes, the visible keyframes. Now, as you can see, this looks like a a version of Pong, uh, which is an 80s video game. If you don't know what that is, uh, just look it up on YouTube. It's really radical. What I would recommend is um, to improve this, to kind of make it look a lot less awful, I would highlight all the keyframes and right click and then go uh, keyframe assistant and easy ease is usually what I like. It's probably the easiest way to do it. And watch this magic. Whoa, what is this witchcraft, right? Look at that, automatically looks smoother. Looks like a prof professional did it. Um, look, it's pretty much as simple as that. Now, let's take it one step further. This is something that not everybody knows and this is something that took me a while to figure out as well. I'm gonna click on all these keyframes and I'm gonna click on this graph editor here. Now, as you can see, it's got this very nice, up and down curve. It's pretty, it's actually quite, quite a slow, quite a slow curve. You know, if this was a marathon, it's, it's quite, it's quite a, 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 st a slow incline, I would say. And, um, you know, not too, it's not too steep, but it does go up a little bit, smooths out a little bit here, goes down the other side. I know you guys are just enjoying me watching my mouse go. Making those noises. Anyway, whatever. So, here's something else you can do. There's another option you might not be aware of keyframe velocity. Now, I didn't know what this meant, but now let's have a look at what it does. Keyframe velocity. Now, we've got um, influence on the left, influence on the right. Okay, I admit, I don't 100% know what this does, but I just know it affects the keyframes in an interesting way. And watch what it does to the graph. So I've put it to, if I put it to say 100 and then 100, watch what happens to the graph. Look how sharp that gets. And look at how rapid the keyframes are in between. So what happens now is that it starts off really, really slow and then zoop, goes right to the other side super quick and then zoop. Now that might be a little bit too much, but that works really well in a lot of circumstances. Now let's see if we can kind of dial that down just a little bit. So let's say, let's make it 75, make this 75. Now you can see it's sort of a little bit less crazy. It's still kind of a, it's still, it's still a fairly steep, in, steep incline. I mean, you can imagine a dude running up this. I mean, that's hard work. I mean, your thighs would be burning by the time you got to here. So watch this. And actually that looks really good to me. I think that to me is a professional level keyframe. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that is profesh. All right, let's go have a look at another one. Now let's change it one more time. Let's make it 50. The 50 is probably closer to what we had originally, but it's probably a nice happy medium. And there you go. 
Look, there's not really much to it. Um, I think reality is that y you, you could use this for so many different things. I mean, it just gives you so much more control over how your keyframes react and you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to default to the, the easy ease keyframes, which was always a bit frustrating to me because I used to watch motion graphics animators and wonder how they actually got more control over the rapidness of the descent or descent of the, um, the keyframe. So look, I hope this has helped. Um, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to know. And, uh, I guess I will see you, uh, when I see ya. Yep. And, um, yeah. So yeah. Hey guys, if you like that tutorial, then maybe you would like to click on some of these ones. Um, I can't promise they were as good as the one that you just saw, but they're not bad. Um, so yeah, just, uh, click on uh, one of the links or, you know, consider subscribing or, um, I don't know. Hey, look, I'll give you a free tip if you subscribe. Invest in Lego. Okay. The Lego Death Star 2, actually, uh, was, you could buy it in 2005 for $379. It's now valued at $5,000 something dollars. So, uh, Lego is a better investment than gold. Free stock tip. You heard it here first, people.